They're on the verge of announcing a successor to George Graham, and they were given a boost today with the news that Graham, now in charge at Spurs, is not planning to come back and poach any of Leeds' players. Here's Don Riddell with the roundup. Martin O'Neill is reckoned to be the hot favourite for the Leeds United hot seat, though he did them no favours on Saturday when his Leicester side beat Leeds 1-0 thanks to a Tony Cotty goal. Although United are hoping to make an appointment within 48 hours, O'Neill continues to play a straight bat. I li I'll listen seriously, honestly. There, I, um, there has been no approach at all from Leeds United, and um, I mean it. And uh, so I, I know. I'm sure you know I was going to blank, just pure speculation, but that's all I have to say. You know? Leeds United have confirmed that they've decided on a new manager to replace George Graham, but refuse to say who he is. In a short statement, the club admit that they've been refused permission to talk directly to their man. Our sports reporter, Derm Tanner, joins us now from Ellen Road. It's all a bit mysterious, Derm, isn't it? What do we know? Well, we know who isn't going to be the new manager. It won't be David O'Leary, because this statement you talk about talks of an external candidate. So David O'Leary already being at Ellen Road is ruled out. So that leads the rumour mill to talk about Martin O'Neill. My investigations say that Coventry City have not been approached. So it looks like Martin O'Neill from Leicester City is the preferred choice. But as you say, there's nothing written down on this piece of paper, the statement from Leeds United. Any word on Mr O'Neill from Leicester? All Leicester City did say to us is that uh, and I quote, almost quote that it's not Leicester City's job to unravel the riddles of Leeds United in their statement, but they refused to deny or confirm that an approach had been made to seek permission to talk to Martin O'Neill. So could this drag on in the way that George Graham's uh, departure did? Well, possibly, yes. It, I think we're, one hopes that we'll see it sorted out soon. Peter Ridsdale, the chairman of Leeds United, said on Saturday he hoped to have a new man in charge at Ellen Road before the Nottingham Forest game. That's a week on Saturday. We live in hope that that is uh, the case for everyone concerned, Leeds fans and everyone at Leeds United, of course. But no definite answer today? Not yet, but uh, the day's young. The day is young. Derm, thanks very much indeed. It's a pretty intriguing day at Allen Road where Leeds United were expected to announce their new manager at lunchtime. What they actually revealed was that they'd made a formal approach for the man that they wanted and that that had been refused. Well, we can cross now to Ellen Road, where our sports reporter, Don Riddell, can hopefully tell us what on, earth's going, uh, what on earth's going on. Don, what is the very latest? Well, Mike, it has actually been brought right up to date now because Leicester City, in the last 45 minutes, have made an announcement to the Stock Exchange that their manager, Martin O'Neill, is the man that Leeds United do want. Now, uh, Martin O'Neill, their manager, has um, been at the Birmingham NEC all afternoon today, but he refused to talk to journalists. He's currently locked in talks with the Leicester chairman, John Elson, and the chairman of the Leicester PLC, Sir Rodney Walker, about his future. No doubt thrashing out a deal, perhaps, or just waiting to see what happens. But there is no doubt now that Martin O'Neill is in the driving seat as regards this deal. Well, that's made that simpler, but what do you think's the next step then, Don? Well, obviously the first offer has been refused. Uh, the Leeds chairman, Peter Ridsdale, has made it clear that he won't be put off by this initial refusal. He referred to the Tottenham chairman, Alan Sugar's determination to get his man, of course, George Graham. Now, what, what's also happened is that uh, if Leeds have made this approach by the book, which we believe they have, they certainly say they have, then there's actually no guarantee that O'Neill is even interested in the job. Some sources close to O'Neill say that what he really wants is control of a club, rather like uh, Brian Clough had with Nottingham Forest in the early 80s. O'Neill, of course, played for Forest then. And some say that O'Neill is already close to establishing that setup with Leicester City. But in many ways, it's another George Graham situation here. This could go on and on and on. And it, really, all O'Neill has to say, Don, is, no, I'm happy to stay at Leicester. That, that would end the whole thing, wouldn't it? Well, it would, but then you've also got to consider that all football managers have an ego. I'm sure Martin O'Neill certainly falls into that category. And he acknowledged at the weekend that Leeds is a very, very big club, so there's absolutely no reason to say why he wouldn't come here. What we also know in all this is that now David O'Leary is out of the running. I managed to grab a quick word with him earlier, and although he said he was flattered that he'd been even considered in the first place, he did actually say that he hoped Leeds can wrap this whole thing up as soon as possible. We've been down that path with, uh, with the George Graham situation. It does nobody any good, and I think with that experience, uh, what we've had, and the club don't want it to drag on. They want to get it uh, done, over and done with as quickly as possible. And I think that's important for everybody concerned. And I'm well, sure everybody here would agree with that because uh, Leeds have some very, very big games coming up, not least uh, Roma in the UEFA Cup in a fortnight's time. Don, thanks for that. If you'd just like to stay on that pitch for about two weeks, we'll get to the end of this. Thank <laughs> you, Don. <laughs>
Since City Football Club have issued a hands-off our manager warning to Leeds United this evening after it emerged that Elland Road had made an official approach to try to bring Martin O'Neill to the Yorkshire club. It's far from certain tonight what the chances are of securing the man they want after the departure of George Graham to Spurs last week. But O'Neill has all the right credentials. Here's Derm Tanner. Essential reading at Leicester today as Martin O'Neill emerged as an even stronger candidate for the Leeds United job. But the normally talkative O'Neill evaded reporters and any questions about a possible move up the M1 as he left training today. Not a lot of activity at Leeds United either, just a cryptic statement giving as little away as possible. The board of Leeds Sporting PLC and Leeds United AFC have approached the chairman of a full-time professional football club for permission to talk to their manager. At this stage, permission has not been forthcoming. But it was confirmed late this afternoon that Leeds United have been knocked back by Leicester in their attempts to speak to the man who brought them cup success only a year ago. A former playing partner of Martin O'Neill's, John McGovern, feels that the Leeds job would be a big temptation. You've got the chance of managing someone bigger, or you've got a better job than the one that you're, you're employed in at the moment, then I would think you would certainly want to take it. I would if I was in his position. Uh, and he's already proved himself so much at Leicester that I think it would be well within his capabilities to go to a club like Leeds and do exceptionally well there. And that's a view which is echoed by Leicester fans. As far as we're concerned, Martin is brilliant. Um, what can you say though? He's a, such a good manager, no wonder he's being poached. The man has done wonders for Leicester City. The fans love him. With the lines drawn, it remains to be seen who will come out on top in the battle for Martin O'Neill. Well, the story rumbles on, and we go now live to Elland Road and Derm Tanner, who has the latest news. Derm, it's on the record that Leeds have picked their man, but do we know at this stage whether their man wants to come north? We don't really. All we know is speculation and rumour and talk within football that Martin O'Neill is interested and tempted. And why wouldn't he be interested? Because, let's face it, Leeds United is a bigger club than Leicester City. And if you look at Martin O'Neill's track record, starting at Wickham, then up to Norwich, then to Leicester, they've all been stepping stones to bigger clubs along the way. There's a kind of symmetry towards that. You can understand quite why Leeds United is a big temptation for him. Tom, um, can you shed any light on what Martin O'Neill has said or maybe thinking about these developments? He's not really said anything. He's in a very tricky situation, obviously, because of the fact that uh, there are now rules regarding how you actually go about taking one manager from, uh, from one manager from a club to another club. But he's in a very difficult situation. He's playing it very much like George Graham played it, not saying very much, smiling to people. He was here, of course, at Ellen Road at the weekend, um, waving to fans and smiling because they're all saying, you know, see you next week or see you in a couple of weeks at Nottingham Forest. So he's in a difficult position. We don't know what he's saying or what he's thinking, but I'm sure this is a big temptation for him. Um, thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. New development every day, it seems. Lo that, that loyalty's out the window, isn't well, it? Well, definitely, yeah. It seems to be going that way, yeah. Well, call one. Let's put Casey Keller on the spot. Okay. Um, let's assume that he is going, because that seems to be the way it, it's going. Right. Um, the Leicester players have been queuing up yourself and Neil Lennon and one two others to say, this is a very sad thing. Um, well, we've, we've had a lot of success under Martin O'Neill in the last couple of years when a lot of people didn't expect it. But, uh, you know, to really tackle the loyalty question, when was the last time that you saw a club jump behind a player who was doing poorly for them and said, I know you are loyal for us by signing that new contract, so we're going to give you a better contract even though you've been crap. It's never going to happen. They're going to dump you as fast as they can to get someone else in. So you're expected to be loyal when you're doing well, but you're expected just to you know, Bunker go off, off as yeah. quickly as you can when you're doing poorly. Yeah. So you define loyalty Okay. However you want to define it, I define it that usually it works both ways, but it doesn't. How do you feel someone like, how do you think someone like Emil Heskey is probably feeling though? Emil, um, under a lot of pressure to move on to a bigger club, sure. signs up with Leicester, presumably because Mark, uh, Martin O'Neill is telling him, we're going places now at this club, and the place he's going is Leeds. <laughs> I don't think anybody, in, uh, anybody who's been around the game and been in the game, if you're a player or you're a manager, is, is ever going to look and say, okay, Martin O'Neill is going to a top six club in the country. You know, he has ambitions personally. You're not going to sit back and say, oh, that's, I can't believe he's doing that. You can just sit back and say, look, I mean, obviously it's a shame, but no question. Have you spoke to him this week? I spoke to him this morning. What does he say? Well, I mean, <laughs> we spoke, I can't exactly tell it on national TV, but, but
But he, he actually, had, had, from what he told me, he, he wasn't sure what he was going to do at that, sure. at that stage. Okay, well what is new, Casey, and I think uh, this is fair to say, what is new is that whenever one of these situations arises, as it did at Leeds last week, and right. the rest of this week, it, what is new is the players lining up to say, well this is going to unsettle me, no question about I, it. I, I think what happens is, you know, usually, well, what's the, what's the quote, the evil you know is sometimes better than the evil you don't know, and, and you really, you don't know what's going to happen, maybe it's going to be a better situation, maybe it's going to be a worse situation, but if things have been pretty good, and you know what's there, then you know what to expect every time you go into training. I do, face, while I read him the story I've got here in the Sun. Um, okay, Casey Keller. According to the Sun, uh, Martin O'Neill is very much on his way, and the new manager of Leicester City will be... Casey's face, please. Steve Walsh. I've heard that. How does that make you feel? I've heard that. Yeah? Because uh, everyone's scared of uh, Steve over at Leicester? No, no, Steve's a great guy, so... Uh, Hopefully, uh, Would that be a good thing? If, if he does, well, I mean, nobody knows until no. you find out. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if the job's done well, but, uh, you know, I think if Steve probably gets somebody who has a little bit more experience to be his number two, then I don't see any reason why he can't do you Do you think well. if, uh, if, if one of Leicester's players kicked another one of Leicester's players in the face during a training session, that Steve Walsh would walk onto the pitch and console one of them in the way that Harry Redknapp seems to be doing? He'd probably console the one who was worth the most money. I see, okay, that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> no. The way to allow their manager, Martin O'Neill, to move to Leeds United. Rodney Walker, the chairman of the public limited company, which owns Leicester, has admitted he's powerless to stop O'Neill talking to Leeds. It's with that we begin our roundup of all the day's main sports news. So Rodney's statement will allow Leeds to make another approach for O'Neill, who's their favoured target as a replacement for George Graham. The 46-year-old Ulsterman still not commented on the proposed switch to Elland Road. Leicester's win at Leeds takes them up to 16th, but their main concern at the moment is more the position of their manager, Martin O'Neill. Will he go to Elland Road or stay at Filbert Street? Well, Sir Rodney Walker, chairman of Leicester City PLC, has been talking to Gary Richardson. You understand Martin wanting to talk to Leeds? You can understand that? I can understand Martin being flattered, after all. Uh, it's only human the same as the, the rest of us. It's only four months since he was subject to an approach from another Premier League club. And uh, any human being is bound to be flattered. He, he is a good manager. That's why we're fighting to keep him at Leicester and why other people are trying to prize him away from us. He's, he's a very sought-after commodity. But Martin, I know, uh, is an honourable man. He understands uh, what the club will be going through at this time. He knows that his players will be unsettled by the uncertainty. And, and he knows the fans will be distraught at the prospect of, of him leaving. Uh, but he's bound to be flattered. Mm. So what happens when Leeds United make the next approach for Martin O'Neill? Is there sure to do? Well, I'm, I'm due to, uh, to have a conversation with the football chairman later today. Um, up to that point, I, uh, I'm not aware of any change in the situation. The first approach was, uh, was refused, uh, and emphatically refused. The Leeds chairman said to me that he would make another approach to you, so on, on that basis, what is your well, he should reaction the, to that? He should expect the same response. So there's no point really them coming on to you saying we want Martin O'Neill? No, he may as well save the phone call or the, the, the postage because we shall refuse his request a second time if it were to come. So as far as you're concerned, really, that's the end of the matter, or is it? As far as I'm concerned, it's the end of the matter. If, however, Martin O'Neill decides he wants to come and talk to us about it, we shall have to listen to what he says. But at this stage, he hasn't made that request. Uh, and I'm looking forward to a future with Martin as manager, with Leicester City in the Premier League, and with a new stadium in, in the year 2000. You use the word there, if he comes and talks to us. Is there a little bit of doubt in your mind then? Not at this stage, none whatsoever. I, um, I would have expected by now to have, to have heard from him if, uh, if there was any doubts about him staying. And I can say quite clearly that, that I haven't had that contact. So I remain confident at this stage that he will be staying with Leicester. And, and be, be assured, I and the rest of the board will be doing everything that we can to keep him there. Well, I'm very biased, but the next man in the hot seat certainly isn't Alan Hansen. I'm, biased, so I'm biased with Martin on you, all right? Yeah, but you've worked with him enough. More associated with Matthew today than football focus. But, um, good to see you. What do you think he's going to do, Martin? Should he stay? Should it's he a go? difficult decision for him. I mean, if you look at the two clubs, with all due respect to Leicester, you can see Leeds in the next four or five years if they improve 
dramatically winning the championship. I can't see Leicester winning the championship. You're trying to say Leeds are a bigger club than Leicester? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh -huh. But um, So you're looking at ambition. If he goes to Leeds, then he's got a chance to win the championship. But certainly at Leicester, he's done a fantastic job. I think one of the great signs of his management is his ability to get the players playing for each other and also his ability to pick up players from the lower divisions. If you look at Elliot, for example, who's been one of the, the best centre-backs in, in the Premiership the last couple of years, and Martin brought him from Oxford, and where other people looked at him and thought, no, he's not good enough. Um, I don't know what he'll do. I mean, if Leicester come up with, with a package that says that they're going to spend money on players, mm -hmm. then, then he might stay. It'll be interesting the next sort of seven, 14 days anyway, that's for sure. It certainly will. Allowing him to speak to other clubs. Well, this afternoon, Leicester once again refused Leeds chairman Peter Ridsdale permission to talk to O'Neill. But as John Shires reports, that seems likely to drive the highly rated manager straight into Leeds United's arms. The pendulum swung firmly Leeds United's way when Martin O'Neill accused Leicester's management of breaking a gentleman's agreement by refusing to let him discuss the Elland Road offer. Others might have other interpretations, he said, but I am clear in my own mind that I would not be breaking my contract. I've kept quiet long enough. It's time for me to say what the situation is. There was no official response from Leeds, but the fans, believing that Leicester would be forced to back down gracefully, were delighted. Martin O'Neill will do a good job because, I mean, he's built Leicester out of nothing and Leeds and got has been to have off that much money for him. He wants to become a better manager and have more money and spend it on players and he's obviously got to go to Leeds, doesn't he? But late this afternoon, another twist. The position of the boards of both Leicester City PLC and Leicester City Football Club is that we continue to refuse permission for Leeds to approach Martin. But the effect of that will surely be to force O'Neill's hand. <laughs> Yes, there, there is that chance, but I take the view that he and I do have a close relation, or have had uh, for a long, long time, and I believe that he and I are able to talk through the situation. However, there is a suggestion it might even be Leicester's intention to force him to walk out on his contract. There are rumours he's already on his way to Leeds to discuss their offer. In any event, it seems inconceivable he can stay at Filbert Street. Many believe he'll be installed at Elland Road before the weekend. Well, that was John Shires reporting uh, there, and joining us now is Ray Fell, Ray's the chairman of the Leeds United Supporters Club. Uh, whichever way this goes, this reflects no credit on, on soccer, the current contract between club and manager. No, that's true. We've gone through this uh, kind of conversation in losing George Graham. Mm. We, we thought at least that we had him on contract, and he was with us for a year or two. I've been recently signed that contract, and the fans were a little upset that contracts don't mean a lot in football. Mm. But nevertheless, we're in that vicious circle, and I sympathise with Leicester fans today, uh, feeling just the same as we were feeling uh, two or three weeks ago. It, it's still confusing. Uh, uh, Leicester refusing permission to Leeds to approach. O'Neill speaking somewhat mystically about a gentleman's agreement. How do you read it, Ray, and how do the supporters feel about it? It's, uh, we were frightened the supporters that we were reaching stalemate. It, was, it seemed early this afternoon good news that O'Neill had, had, had referred to a gentleman's agreement and expressed the wish to speak to Leeds. That mm. was good news, we thought, from a Leeds United point of view. A uh, little soured now by the news that the club is still having this insistence that he not be not allowed to speak to us and it looks very much as if the ball but is there, in I mean, O'Neill's court. I mean you could be accused of being a hypocrite there couldn't I you? I agree because with you. I agree you with know, you. You know you wanted Leeds to fight tooth and nail to keep George. That's right but as I said earlier it's the vicious circle we're in and contracts as they are and, and the, the strength that are put on them we have to go around this but circle. Very briefly Ray is he the right man and do you think he's coming to Leeds? I think he is the right man. He's done a good job at Leicester. The Leeds fans appreciate that. I think they're looking forward to the opportunity of having work for Leeds. Do you think he's coming? I'm hoping so, yes. Raphael, thank you for joining us. Well, we'll, of course, bring you any update on the Leeds United saga tomorrow. O'Neill has said he wants to talk to the club. But following O'Neill's comments, the chairman of Leicester City said he'll veto any approach from Leeds. It is for me to persuade him uh, that uh, not only that he isn't able to go because he isn't able to speak to them, uh, but that there are 101 reasons why he would be better off at Leicester City. Crossroads, it's moved location to Filbert Street, where Leicester boss Martin O'Neill has been confronted with something of a dilemma. Leeds want O'Neill? You can't talk to him, says Leicester chairman John Elson. And the plot includes alleged broken promises, gentlemen's agreements, codes of conduct. Here's the latest from the Filbert Street Motel. I thought I had an agreement in the summertime. He has a different interpretation of it altogether. At least he remembers the conversation. Don't even think Sir Rodney does at this minute. And I know that um, uh, Mr. Elsom said that it was like a fleeting 25 second uh, um, uh, part in an hour and a half. Fleeting and all as it may be, 25 seconds and all it may be, it did take place. 
and uh, my interpretation of it is something that I felt um, I felt that I would be given the right to speak uh, to interested parties uh, if, if, they, if the case arose. And that still holds. There will be a, a, a section of the fans say, well, if he wants to speak, well, let him go. And, uh, and you know, I'd not be able to do anything about that. Certainly from the faxes and the letters I've received, there's, uh, you know, um, uh, the fans have, have, have enjoyed the last couple of years, of which I have. I'm, 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 I may never have a rapport. I used to think my rapport with Wickham uh, fans was very good. I may never, ever have a rapport with fans again like I, like I have here. And uh, so all those things have to, uh, I have to consider. But selfishly, for my family's sake, I thought that it was an offer that I would certainly have to look into. Can you heal that relationship now between Martin Neal and the Leicester board? I don't think so. I think Martin just should send his wife Geraldine in to sort John Elsom out and I think all the problems will be solved. No, I don't think so, Ray. I think, you know, looking and, and reading between the lines, it looked as though that, that Leicester have backed him into a corner and, and because he's a man of principle, he's going to say that I want to speak to Leeds. And I don't think that can be resolved, to be honest with you. Sometimes things go in chapters. It just seems like that chapter in Martin O'Neill's career has come to an end. Quite possibly, um, you know, and people will say that Leeds are a bigger club, they're certainly in a, probably a better position at the moment, um, you know, they've got a better ground, we know all about Leicester's ground and, and the fact that they want to move it would appear that maybe Leeds have more money to go out and buy players and I think Martin's looked at that and he thought, he thinks, well I've done all I can do at Leicester, maybe the chance now to go to Leeds and kick on again. First, the latest on all that fuss, Martin O'Neill and the managerial vacancy at Elland Road. Fast, 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 fast. We're told that by tomorrow morning the waiting will certainly be over. We've said that 14 times already. <laughs> O'Neill has promised a decision shortly. Here's John Shires. At Leicester's Premiership game with Spurs last night, the fans showed their feelings, pleading with O'Neill to stay. Could that tip the balance? I want him to want to stay at Leicester City, and I hope once after this emotional evening and once he's had a good sleep, uh, that uh, he will come to the conclusion that I'd like him to come to. And if ever a result was likely to swing it, this was it. As Muzzy is it, volleyed a spectacular late winner, ironically against Spurs, now managed by George Graham, who created the Elland Road vacancy in the first place. O'Neill's reaction appeared to speak volumes, yet his post-match interviews indicated that Leeds still have a chance. The chairman has uh, made some big statements tonight, you know, about being decent manager, all that type of stuff. Oh, Best manager in Britain. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, that, that today, today, yes. Five weeks time down the way, you know, lose five matches, not so clever. And in talking also of the wrench he'd feel if he were to leave Filbert Street, did O'Neill drop perhaps his biggest hint so far? Well, that was John Shires reporting in the meantime. Past battle for the Leicester City manager, Martin O'Neill, will be decided in the next 24 hours. O'Neill, wanted by Leeds United to replace George Graham, has given an assurance that a decision is imminent. I'll try and take a... Uh, proper perspective of it all and after that there once once I do make my mind up and once I make a decision on it then there's no going back and I promise you that that'll, that'll happen. Leeds United have lost their bid to bring Leicester City's Martin O'Neill to Ellen Road. At a news conference this morning Leicester City's chairman confirmed O'Neill's future is at Filbert Street. It means that Leeds caretaker boss David O'Leary now looks set to take over full time. Martin O'Neill had been strongly linked with the Ellen Road hot seat since the departure of George Graham three weeks ago. But this morning he put an end to weeks of speculation concerning his future at a news conference at Filbert Street. Once that decision has been made, end of it. Clear it up. It's not it's something I'll sit and regret now. I don't. I have to get on with it. I have plenty of time to regret when, when I've retired and packed in or got the site. Leeds caretaker manager David O'Leary, who was banned from the touchline during United's UEFA Cup clash against Roma last night, now looks highly likely to take over. Despite losing 1-0 to the Italian giants, Leeds put on a valiant performance under the watchful eye of O'Leary, albeit from the stands. The Leeds board are due to meet when the club return from Rome this afternoon, with the naming of its new manager expected shortly afterwards. It's Martin O'Neill possibly leave, and of course he didn't, so Leeds must look elsewhere. But what better excuse could I have for nipping up the motorway to my hometown to meet the still Leicester City manager? It must be nice to feel wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, especially after the uh, early stages of my career here, um, going back three years ago when I came in. 
crowd were mm. pretty hostile. You, you know? often refer to that. Oh, I do, I do, I do, I do. No, no, listen, it's almost ad nauseum now. I have, I've, in fact, uh, in all honesty, the, um, the players themselves um, are just getting a bit sick of me talking about it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think the crowd are as well too. So they've, I've totally and utterly forgiven them. And, um, and I think that they've uh, forgiven me as well. I don't, I don't think you could fault the crowd reaction the other night for you. Was it more than you could have oh, ever imagined? Absolutely. You know, I, I, I never thought that uh, I would ever see those uh, scenes. And uh, I have to say it was, it was emotional. Yeah? Um, and it played a big part in, in my decision. Mm. Do you think if you were allowed permission to speak to Leeds, you'd be at Ellen Road now? I, I have to say, um, that Leeds United coming in, considering the, the people that are, that are actually out of work that they could have gone for and were prepared to pay some compensation for me, was a massive confidence booster mm. to me. It really was. And, and uh, from that aspect, I actually owe them quite a lot. Um, so you're asking me a question. It's a bit of an imponderable because I would love the, the opportunity, as I say, a bit of flattery and such things like that. And I suppose deep down at the end of it all, uh, if it came to some sort of, sort of financial terms, then it was something I would have had to have looked at. Mm -hmm. You've said something along the lines of that, that even though you still get on with the chairman at Leicester, John Elson, you, you wouldn't have dinner with him anymore. Is that uh, true? Well, no, that, he, that, I've just met him outside and he mm -hmm. told me, well, I think we'd at least have breakfast. I, right? that's, that's true. I, well, le le let me put this in real perspective. Because now, I think Leicester because fans will be worried about that well, situation. Well, that, that's right. And, and it was a question I was asked at the press conference of whether I could actually eventually work with Mr. Elsom again. Mr. Elsom has, uh, in many aspects, gone mm. out on a limb, has now decided, uh, has put a contract to me that I, uh, to uh, uh, an extension of another two years to the year 2002. And I have to say, guys, in this situation where I'm actually in work and I, I'm very pleased to be in work in, in a day and age when, when, uh, when you know, that maybe that's part of success, being in work as much as anything else. And you know how precarious this job is. He has put an offer, in the, a substantially improved offer to me. It's an excellent offer and one that I should honestly sign and probably will do because um, he has gone out on a limb and, and decided, well, if, if you're really worth that there, then we'll, we'll, we'll try and pay you accordingly. So how happy are you now, Martin? Are you really where you want to be? I, yes, I am. I am happy with where I am. Um, I have to be happy because, um, it, you know what it's like. I, 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 I've, I've matches to win. I, I suppose I made reference in the press conference that when I came here, first of all, to the football club, I wanted to win games to ingratiate myself with the crowd. When they lost a bit of heart and a bit, a bit of faith with me, then I wanted to win matches for my own benefit. Eventually now, I actually want to win them for both again. And, and you'd have to say, obviously, selfishly, you want to win matches for yourself because you know the consequences. And that, that will not change. The, I think what you might be getting at is your heart and soul in it. My heart and soul is in it. What was the mood of the players like throughout this? Did any of them come up to and speak to you about it? Whatever the players are, whatever that we might lack in certain things, um, commitment is not one of them. And if they saw a lack of commitment in myself, well, well they're bound to ask themselves, well, well, why should I go and bother if the manager's not bothered? I am bothered. I've, I've made the decision now. You might say that the decision in many aspects was, was semi made for me, but it's been made now, and I am determined to give it my very, very best shot. We'll have a look at it again in the situation in the summertime, see where we all are, and you never know, uh, the likes of Heskey and, and Lennon and people, I guess, might want to go and stay for another year, which would be delightful news. Great news for Leicester, Garth. But, I mean, he, he said that the decision was semi-made for him, but having said that, he could have walked out, and really what he's done is, is show a sort of rare sign of loyalty in the current climate. Oh, without any shadow of doubt, I think the first thing I'd like to say is that uh, anyone who turns out breakfast or dinner uh, <laughs> from the chairman uh, only does it on the basis that you're paying for it. If you're paying for it, you turn him down. <laughs> but it, 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 Martin O'Neill strikes me as being an honourable man. Mm. And, and it would appear that the Leicester board have been very, very astute in keeping him there mm. and keeping the whole thing boiling until that game against Spurs at Filbert Street where they gave the fans an opportunity to make their feelings felt. Oh, now, that was a rare show of emotion from fans. It They're was. Not, I mean, most fans are normally desperate to get rid of the manager, aren't they? <laughs> once that happened, once Martin O'Neill came onto that pitch and the fans responded to him, you've got to be made of stone, I think, mm. to walk away. 
Uh, and I think when Martin went away uh, and, and thought about it, um, he obviously felt better of moving. And, and, and to hear Martin say and to talk about people like Heskey and Lennon and people like that, I think they were only likely to stay because mm. Martin O'Neill's there, because he's brought them through, they trust him, and there's a great relationship there. So I think all, way, all, 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 all round, Leicester and Martin O'Neill really do win. Mm. I think it was important for Leicester because without him, the players... I mean, I don't know, Goss, I don't know about you, but I think there should be some sort of deal made where managers can't move from one club to the other in the Premiership in the season. Mm. Because George Graham walks out of Leeds, Leeds are in a mess. Mm. If Leeds take Leicester's yeah. manager, they're in a mess. But it's not right, is it? There's a school of thought that some players shouldn't move within the season, that if mm. you could actually sort that out, that might but help managers even worse, to break contact. Yeah. Well, if managers are going to start talking to players about loyalty, then I think they've got to show loyalty. Mm. And I think it goes right down the board. And if I was going to really be mischievous, I'd say loyalty really should start in the boardroom with the chairman and the directors, mm -hmm. and making absolutely, absolutely sure they're not tapping players up here, there, and everywhere. So go right the way through. So I think if they want to lead, yeah, I think managers have got to sort of look at the contract and say, look, I've signed it. I really think I should stay mm -hmm. with it, unless there's some sort of conversation put in place. It'll never happen, all that. <laughs>